In today's video, we're going to see how we can use graphs to measure the mean rate of a reaction and the rate of reaction at a specific time. We saw in the previous video that we can calculate the rate of reaction by dividing either the amount of reactants used or the amount of product formed over the time taken for that change to occur. For example, if this reaction between magnesium and hydrochloric acid produced 1200 centimeters cubed of hydrogen in four minutes, then our rate would be equal to 1200 over four times 60, or 240. So it'd be five centimeters cubed per second. The problem with this type of calculation though, is that it only gives us the average rate during those four minutes. Whereas in reality, the reaction would have been fastest at the beginning and then it would have slowed down as the reaction progressed. And by four minutes, it might have even finished. If we had a way to monitor how much gas was being released during the reaction though, then we could plot it on a graph and see how the rate of reaction changes during the reaction. On the x-axis, we'd have time, and on the y-axis, we'd have the volume of hydrogen produced. At first, because there'll be loads of magnesium and acid that can react together, loads of hydrogen will be produced. So we get a very steep curve, which indicates a high rate of reaction. As the magnesium starts to get used up though, the hydrogen will be produced more slowly, until finally the graph plateaus, once all of the magnesium has been used up. With a graph like this, there are two main things that you could be asked to do. One is to calculate the mean rate of the reaction over a certain period, which is what we did earlier. For example, what is the mean rate of reaction in the first three minutes? For this, we just need to use our graph to find out how much hydrogen was produced in those first three minutes. So we find three minutes on the x-axis, and then draw up a dashed line to see where it intersects our curve. Then we draw another line from this point across to the y-axis to find that 1200 centimeters cubed of hydrogen was produced. So we just do 1200 centimeters cubed divided by three minutes or 180 seconds to get an average rate of 6.67 .6 centimeters cubed per second. The other thing you could be asked though is to calculate the actual rate at a particular time. For example, what is the rate of reaction at two minutes? To do this, we need to calculate the gradient of the curve at that particular point. So the first step is still to find two minutes on the x-axis and trace up to find where it intersects our curve. But then instead of drawing a line across to the y-axis like we did before, we instead draw a tangent to the curve at that point. And remember a tangent is just a straight line that just touches the curve and has the same gradient as the curve does at that point. Once we have our tangents drawn, we need to find the gradient of the line, which is equal to the change in y divided by the change in x, which in our case would be the change in the volume of hydrogen divided by the change in the time. The best way to do this is to make your line as long as possible so that it hits one of the axes. And then trace lines from the other end of your tangent to the y-axis and then to the x-axis. So now this section here would be the change in the hydrogen, which is about 600. And this section here would be the change in time, which is about two minutes, 50 seconds, or 170 seconds. So we just do 600 divided by 170 to give us 3.53 centimeters cubed per second as our rate. Just in case you're worrying about your tangents, the examiners know that you're judging it by eye, so they'll allow answers within a small range of values. So even though you should be careful and try to get it as close as you can, you don't have to worry about getting it perfect. Before we finish, I just want to point out that we could also have done the same thing with a graph that plotted the amount of magnesium remaining against time. This time though, the graph would have started with however many grams we used in our reaction, so in this case 1.2 grams, and then would have declined rapidly at first, but then more slowly. 
So if we wanted to find the rate of reaction at one minute, we'd just do the same process as before. So we'd find the one minute point on our curve, draw our tangent at that point, and use that line to figure out our change in y, which is about 0.72 grams, and our change in x, which is 1 minute 40 seconds. And finally, we would divide our change in y by our change in x. So 0.72 divided by 1 minute 40, or 100 seconds, to find our rate of 0.0072 grams per second. And if you made your tangent a bit longer or a bit shorter, and so used different y and x values, that's absolutely fine. As long as your tangent is just as steep as ours, you would end up getting the same answer. Anyway, that's all for today. So if you enjoyed it, then please do give us a like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.